Hey friends, welcome back to Anchor Homestead. We are making dinners again this week. And the first dinner we're gonna make this week is stuffed cabbage. It is only about one, I guess it's 1.45 now. And I was not planning to cook right now. I was wanting to be out in the garden and do a garden tour with you guys. But my neighbors had other plans. One of my neighbors is mowing his lawn and the other neighbor is doing wood chipping right now. So I thought, let's just go inside and make dinner. Even though it's early, this is one of those dishes you can make whenever you have them in it and then you can have it ready for the oven. This is not like last week's dinner where this is a 15 minute meal. It doesn't take that long, but it definitely is a little bit more labor of love. So for the stuffed cabbage, we need a cabbage. So I just cored it out and on the stove, I have a pot of boiling water. But before I put this cabbage in there to start removing some of these leaves, I wanna get some onions chopped up because we are gonna need onions for the sauce for this and we are gonna need onions for the filling. So I'm gonna cut three onions and I'm gonna get them sauteing while we start peeling and cooking the outside leaves so we can stuff the cabbage. Now I have to be out of the house by 2.45, so that's in one hour. That should be more than enough time to get this dinner going, but we'll see how far we get. So we have our cabbage here and we have our pot of boiling water. We're just gonna gently put that cabbage in there and cook it for about a minute. And in our pot, we're gonna cook our sauce in. We're gonna put our oil, a little bit of butter, and all of our onions. Half of these onions are gonna go for the filling and half are gonna be for the sauce. I haven't made this recipe in at least two and a half years since we've lived at this house. I used to make it, I don't know, every six months or so. It's so good. I did not grow up eating this recipe. I was watching a Martha Stewart and she made it and ever since then I was like, that looks so good and it's so good. I don't really follow a recipe when I make it, but I can link an actual recipe down below. You wanna cook the cabbage just for about a minute or two for two reasons. One, it's gonna be a lot easier to peel the cabbage off this head. If you, try, if you try to peel one leaf of cabbage off at a time, then what happens is you break the leaves. But two, it's gonna make the cabbage leaf a little bit more malleable so you can actually roll it up and you don't just break it when you make your filling for it. So it has a rice and beef filling. So you wanna be careful when you do this because this is obviously boiling water I'm peeling off one piece of cabbage and then I'm keeping that piece of cabbage in the water for just a little bit longer so that it will continue to get a little bit softer and more tender so it'll be easy to roll when we go to roll this into a roll. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in with our onions. I guess I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic salt because that's, because that's what I grabbed. I have a cookie sheet out so that when this cabbage leaf is done being cooked, I can just put it on the cookie sheet. I just took out a few of the onions from the pot so we can let them cool a little bit before we put them in our filling. I'll let those onions continue to cook a little bit. And I take apart the entire cabbage. So these little leaves that we're not going to fill, I just line the dish with them and I cook them in with everything because we really like the cabbage part of the stuffed cabbage. So I use the entire cabbage head, even these little leaves. So the recipe I'm kind of following is Ina Gartner. She's the one that I usually follow. The only thing that I do different though is I don't add raisins because I don't really like raisins. I think it would be fine if you blended the raisins in. A I'm gonna do that, okay. Hold that thought. We're gonna go ahead and do what I was just saying. So be right back. So I do not like biting into raisins. I do not mind the flavor of raisins. So what I think I'm gonna do in her recipe to adapt it, is we're gonna put the raisins in the blender and we're gonna blend it with our tomato sauce. This is home, this is homegrown tomatoes from, I don't have a date on it, probably 2021. And I'll go ahead and add the red wine vinegar to this as well, just to add a little bit more liquid. Now we're gonna add that to our onions. 
I'm excited to try this and see how well it turns out. And now we're going to add one more jar of crushed tomato. Ooh, crushed tomatoes. We're also going to add some garlic. This is homegrown garlic. That's all that I have left. A little bit of red pepper flakes. Pepper. And a bunch of parsley from last year's garden. And the last ingredient is some brown sugar. And now I'm going to let this simmer away while we make the filling. Now we're going to go ahead and make our filling mixture. This is some leftover rice from the other night. We're going to add our onions. My hands are clean. It's going to be the easiest way to get in here and mix all this up. So we're going to mix this together. Now that we have our cabbage all prepped and ready to go, and we have our sauce on the stove simmering and our filling mixture, we are ready to pull this all together. This is not taking as long to pull together as I remember. Looking for my knife. Now there is a rib right here that you can cut out if you want to. All you have to do is cut a little V shape and you can pull that out and compost it if you want and then to close that shape you just push the two pieces together to fill this I have a half cup measure I'm gonna put a half a cup maybe a little bit more with the ones with the really big leaves push it out we're basically gonna roll this just like a burrito I will put the two sides in I bring it toward me And there's our first one. The original recipe on Ina Gardner's recipe, she says to only use a half a cup of rice and two and a half pounds of ground beef. Well, I only thawed a pound and a half out and I cooked a lot more rice. So I'm just having my ground beef stretch a little bit by putting a little bit more rice in there. But you could change the filling up however you wanted. If you wanted, to use ground turkey or ground chicken or ground pork. You could kind of use whatever you want. It would maybe be good sometime to experiment with half sausage, half ground beef. Something like that would be yummy. When we get to the more center leaves, the rib is not as tough, so I don't worry about cutting it out. It is a lot easier to roll these if you don't cut it because you're not working with that slit in the middle. Our cabbage rolls are done. I do not want to put them in my sauce yet because my sauce is hot and that is raw beef. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cabbage rolls in the refrigerator because I need to leave for about an hour and I don't want those in the hot sauce before I put them in the oven because I won't put this in the oven until they'll probably take about an hour to cook. So they're not going to go in the oven for a while, but I wanted to taste the sauce with the raisins because I've never cooked it with raisins before. I always just skip it and add a little bit extra brown sugar. That is delicious. Oh my goodness. It's almost like a sweet and sour sauce because it has the vinegar, the brown sugar, and the raisins, but the raisins don't just add a sweetness. They kind of add like a, a richness, a depth of flavor that you don't get. This is probably the best sauce I've ever made. Now, the original recipe does not call for the red pepper flakes, but I would add those because there's just like this little bit of heat that you get at the end, which balances the sweetness because there is the sugar and those raisins in there. It is quite sweet. So I think you need that vinegar and the red pepper flakes. So this is on, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. I'm not worried about this sitting on my stove for an hour or so while I'm gone. I'm going to stick those cabbage rolls in the fridge and then when I get back and we pull dinner together I'll show you what it looks like. I'm home and I was out in the garden and look at what I found. So this is a bunch of asparagus that I just harvested and we are going to roast this along with dinner tonight so it's going to be really yummy. I'm going to go ahead and take out a little bit of our sauce and we're going to go ahead and put this, we're going to layer it. So I've already nestled a few pieces of cabbage in there. 
I'm going to go ahead and just do the rest of it. Now we'll take our cabbage rolls and we'll just start lining them around. I'm going to put the rest of the cabbage in here. We're going to let all that stew together and we'll eat that cabbage along with everything else. Put a layer of sauce. And now we put the lid on. I have the oven preheated to 350 degrees. That's not gonna fit. It's musical chairs of these racks the last couple days. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees. That is going to take a good hour, if not a little bit more to cook, because they're really dense and it's raw meat. So you gotta cook all of that meat completely through. And what I'm gonna do is manage this sink of dishes. This is not just from today, this is yesterday's dishes as well. And I've got a ton of eggs that I just brought in that need to be taken care of. So I'm gonna get the kitchen cleaned. I forgot, I almost forgot. We gotta get our asparagus ready to be roasted. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna go very, very simple on the asparagus, just a little bit of oil, and some garlic salt. Nothing fancy here, just we're gonna let these beautiful asparagus shine. This asparagus is not re Ooh. This asparagus is not ready to go in the oven. I'm only gonna cook this probably at 415 degrees for about 15 minutes. So we'll be back when the whole dinner's ready to be served. Dinner is not done. It has probably another half an hour. And I thought, why don't I go ahead and get tomorrow's dinner going? We're gonna make some barbecue pizza. So in here, I have about a cup and a half of water. I just put some yeast in there. We're gonna add maybe about two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm gonna finish that bottle and we're gonna just throw this in the refrigerator. We're not gonna let it rise or anything and it'll continue to kind of like ferment proof in the fridge and then tomorrow I don't have to worry about making the crust. We're gonna add maybe two teaspoons, two tablespoons of sugar and I'm gonna go ahead and use my whole wheat flour because I need to use this up. So we're gonna use this and I just stepped in some water, <laughs> that's okay. We're gonna use probably about three cups of flour. It's all about the texture and, or the consistency of what the dough looks like, kind of how we gauge how much flour we're gonna use. I do have a recipe for this, but I generally don't measure anything when it comes to pizza dough. Would help if the KitchenAid was plugged in, wouldn't it? And the last thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of salt. When I first look in here, it looks like it's a little bit sticky, but I'm gonna have it knead for about 10 minutes. And the thing is when you're using whole wheat dough or whole wheat flour, it takes time for that flour to fully hydrate. And so I would rather it be on the little bit too moist side than too dry side. And I can always add a little bit of flour if I need to, but I'm gonna let this knead for about 10 minutes in the KitchenAid and then we'll see if we need to add a little bit of flour. Maybe I'll see in five minutes if we need to add a little bit more or not, but I just let it go and basically dinner is started for tomorrow. Oop, we have our dough and this looks good to me because it's gonna continue to kind of, it's kind of almost gonna be like a no need pizza dough recipe because it's gonna be in the fridge for at least 24 hours at this point. It's still a little bit sticky, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather it be a little bit, I'd rather it not be a dry dough when it bakes. So we're just gonna add a little oil to the bottom of our mixer bowl. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna roll this around. This is just so it doesn't dry out. 
I'm gonna cover this. It's gonna go in the fridge until tomorrow when we make our pizza. So I put in the asparagus down here and I was watching TV, so they're definitely roasty toasty, but they smell and look delicious. And now let's get this out of the oven. It is definitely done at this point. Oh, it's heavy. Josh just pulled into the garage. Oh my goodness, look at that. Delicious. The way that we serve these stuffed cabbage rolls, sorry if you can hear the dogs barking, Josh just got home and they get really excited. So I just put, the, we put one of these in a bowl usually and we plop a little dollop of sour cream on it and it's so good, so good, so good. So we could probably just pull this. Oh yeah, that's completely done, delicious. I'm dishing up your dinner. And you always want to put a little bit of sauce on it and maybe a piece of cabbage. This smells so good. Oh, good. Stuffed cabbage rolls. We haven't had these in a long time. And that is dinner. If you've never given stuffed cabbage rolls a try, I highly recommend it. You will fall in love. And when I posted a picture of this on Instagram, someone said that these freeze really, really well, which I never even thought to make this as a freezer meal. So that might be something coming up where... I make this as a freezer meal because it is seriously one of our favorites and it is a little bit labor intensive. It didn't take too long. The only part that kind of takes a little bit of time is just the cabbage, is getting that cabbage cooked enough to where you can peel the, the uh, leaves off. But we're going to enjoy this and this is going to make fantastic leftovers. So I'll see you back in here when we make pizza. We have some leftovers still in the fridge from previous dinners, so depending, we might not eat those tomorrow so we'll either have pizza or leftovers for dinner tomorrow but i'm thinking we're probably going to end up with leftovers but next time we're in the kitchen making pizza i'll see you in here hey friends welcome back we are going to make our barbecue pizza today i have two sheet pans out and i'm going to line them with some parchment paper just for ease of cleanup i give myself the gift of parchment paper to make my cleanup life a little bit easier and quite honestly, Josh does most of the cleanup after dinner, so it's a gift to him, making his life a little easier. So we have our pizza dough here that we made together the other night. And if I was thinking a little bit sooner, what I should have done is take this pizza dough out of the refrigerator about two or three hours ago. I didn't do that. I took it out about 20 minutes ago. I stuck it in the oven with the light on just to help warm it up a little bit. I'm actually gonna go ahead and preheat the oven to 415 degrees. And we're gonna get our dough rolled out. I'm gonna cut this in half. You could cook this on a cast iron. I do that a lot, but I do not feel like getting that out and dealing with that. What I'm doing is adding a little bit of avocado oil to our parchment and I'm gonna spread this out. This is some cornmeal. We like cornmeal on the bottom of our pizza, just add a little bit of crunch. And I'm just gonna take the time to press this out to as thin as the crust I want. Sometimes I find it helps to use the weight of the dough and just pick it up and let the dough kind of stretch itself. So now that we have our pizza crust all rolled out, we're gonna put our barbecue sauce on top. One way to use rhubarb in a savory way is to make barbecue sauce out of it. And I made this last year. I made it two years in a row, actually. The first year I followed the ball canning cookbook recipe to a tea, and it's good, but it has clove and cinnamon and ginger in it. And so it's a more, it tastes kind of like a Christmassy barbecue sauce, if that makes sense, because it's called the Victorian barbecue sauce, which those flavors were really popular in the Victorian era. And so if you watch my video where we make this barbecue sauce, I can link that down in the description box. I switch up the flavors. So instead of adding those kind of like warm spices, I add things that would normally be in barbecue sauce, like dried mustard, paprika, and all the vinegars and everything. So this one tastes more like a traditional barbecue sauce, but it's made with homemade rhubarb, and it's just a great way to use up rhubarb even if you don't grow rhubarb, it's a great recipe to try. So I'm gonna spread this out and I'm not gonna actually make any of it. Well, I shouldn't say that. 
I don't know if I, I need to do an inventory of my pantry. Let me know if that's something you want to see a full inventory of the pantry before we go into real food preservation mode coming up this summer. Cause I should probably do an inventory to know if I need to make it this year. I don't think I do, but it wouldn't hurt to, to take a look in the pantry. Cause it is rhubarb season. I've already made quite a few rhubarb desserts. Now that our crust is ready, we are gonna get our toppings ready. This is some canned chicken. We love to have chicken on our barbecue pizza and I'm excited to use this for this. Later this week, we're gonna make a roast. So I'm gonna save this broth and we're gonna put this broth for a roast. So now we have our pre-cooked chicken and I didn't have to do anything to cook our chicken for this. I wanna show you this really cool thing I got in my PO box. I have not tried this yet, but I thought today would be the perfect day to give it a try for the first time. It comes with all of these different attachments. I'll link this down below if I can find it on Amazon but it has all these different size attachments and it's supposed to make grating and slicing a lot easier. Very easy to put together. You just screw the handle on like this. I've never used this, so you and I are gonna figure out together whether it works. It also has a suction on the side, so let's see if it suctions down. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I'm pushing on it, it's not falling over. So let's give this a try. So you just put your piece of cheese in here and it's got a holder downer thing. So right, go this way. Oh, Josh just got home and he turned the lights on for me. I don't know why I've been working in the dark. Okay, so this is working beautifully except for, you definitely need to use a bowl because it's not going onto my cutting board. So let me get a bowl out. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. It's amazing. That works wonderfully. I wish I could personally thank every single one of you who sent me something in my P.O. box. It's humbling and every time I go, I get a little emotional because you guys are the most generous community out there. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So we have all of our components. I put the chicken in the can pretty big. So I'm gonna just peel it apart just to break it up just a little bit. Red onion. Okay, now what I wanna do is nestle these cherry tomatoes cut side up so they can kind of roast in the oven and dry out. Never done this before, but in theory, I think it sounds really good. So we're just gonna try it out and see. Can't hurt anything. One of my absolute favorite things in the summer is to make pizza and after it comes out of the oven, slice those tomatoes that are fresh out of the garden that are still warm and put fresh tomatoes on cooked pizza. Oh my gosh, it's so good. My friend's family always did that growing up and I thought it was the weirdest thing. And now that I'm a gardener and an adult and enjoy a fresh tomato. I think it is one of life's best pleasures. I wanna season my pizza just like I would season anything else. So this is a little bit of garlic salt. I'm gonna put Parmesan cheese over the top. I really like zucchini, fresh zucchini on barbecue pizza, but I don't have any of that right now. So this is what we're doing. probably 10 minutes, I'll rotate it another 10, 15 minutes and then dinner will be done. It was that easy. I don't even have very much cleanup to do because the chicken was already cooked, the dough was already done. I just need to clean up a little bit of our cheese and our cutting board. So in the sink, I do have a chuck roast out. I went ahead and got that out of the freezer. I'm gonna let that thaw at room temperature for probably about an hour or two until after dinner. And then Josh will go ahead and put that in the refrigerator for me tomorrow. Or <laughs> tonight and the next meal we're gonna be making together is a chuck roast and I love making chuck roasts because what I do with the leftovers is we make stroganoff and it makes the best stroganoff so if you pre-cook your roast you have a beautiful roast dinner we'll make a gravy together and have potatoes and onions and 
whatever else I find around here. And then we take the leftover meat and we turn it into stroganoff and it is phenomenal. And we're gonna use our homemade pasta that we made together for that. So anyway, I actually do kind of have a menu plan for the next two meals that we're gonna be making. So that is not very unlike me. Friends, I forgot to mention that Josh was eating that stuffed cabbage for dinner. And as he was eating it, he's like, this tastes really rich. And there, what did you do different? There's something different about it. There's like a depth of flavor. It was those raisins. That's what I told him. And he's like, oh my gosh. So if you make those stuffed cabbage rolls, do that trick, especially if you don't want to bite into a raisin, do that trick where you blend them up and you get such rich, delicious, yummy flavor. So you don't have to bite into a raisin. Maybe you want to bite into a raisin. I don't know, maybe you love raisins. Dinner's done. This looks fantastic. Those onions cooked up just how I want. Oop, hot. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Cooked up just beautifully. I'm gonna let these cool for 10 minutes or so because if I was to cut into them right now, the cheese would ooze off and everything and they will just firm up nicely. It's already eight o'clock. I did not realize how late it was. So. I'm gonna call Josh down for dinner. We're gonna enjoy a beautiful, delicious dinner, and I'll see you back when we make pot roast. It is quite a few days later, and we are gonna go ahead and get this pot roast made. The first thing I'm gonna do is slice an onion, and I'm gonna put this on the bottom of a crock pot. We're just gonna line our crock pot with these onions. These are not gonna be onions that we're going to be eating. These are gonna add flavor to the broth, because as you'll see, I'm gonna make quite a bit of broth in order to use that broth for the stroganoff. These are some homegrown potatoes that we grew last year and they are washed up and I'm gonna put those at the bottom. I like to put my potatoes at the bottom of the row so that the drippings and everything can just enhance the flavor of these potatoes. I added a little bit of homemade season salt and some black pepper and then the bottom of the crock pot is ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is sear our chuck roast. I prefer not to salt and pepper my roast before I sear it. I feel like I get a better sear. I have some avocado oil in this cast iron. I chose avocado oil because it has a very, very high smoke point, so you can get a really good, good sear on your chuck roast. I like chuck roast because it kind of falls apart. And the next thing we're gonna do is take some red wine and we're gonna deglaze the bottom of our cast iron. There were some bits that were stuck to the bottom of that and we want to use that flavor in our broth that we're going to end up using. So I take a wooden spoon and I scrape up any of those bits and I let this simmer for about four or five minutes just to get any of the alcohol flavor out. We're going to pour this over our roast and I put quite a bit in there and then what we're going to do is we are going to add Worcestershire sauce. I love the combination of Worcestershire black pepper, red wine, and beef. I just think it's fantastic flavor. So because we did not season up our roast earlier, we're gonna go ahead and put salt and pepper on it. These are some onions from the garden from last year. I want those to braise and cook on the top. So we put that on there. We put this in the crock pot for high and this cooked for about 10 hours. Hey friends, so today took a little bit of a turn. Josh and I were planning on doing a work day, but we ended up ripping out carpet and it became a demo day. And so let me tell you how grateful I am that we made a crock pot meal. So what we're gonna do is kind of get everything out of the crock pot. It's bubbly, it smells so good. The beef basically braised in there with all those yummy Worcestershire and red wine and just delicious, delicious flavor. So thanks for being with me even though I basically have been working, working, working all day. We're gonna first take out these homegrown onions they're basically braised and just so delicious with full of flavor. This meat is fall apart tender. I wish you could smell it in here. This beef is fall apart tender. So we're gonna have to get it out of here carefully. So here we have our beef, our potatoes, our braised onions. The sliced onions that were in here, those are just gonna be for flavor editing and I'm gonna strain those out. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. I'm gonna let the fat solidify on the top. I'll strain that. We're gonna use this broth to make stroganoff. And I was gonna make a gravy tonight, but it is already, like I said, it's 8, 12. 
and I do not feel like doing that. So we're just gonna have really yummy, I put the crock pot lid, I put the crock pot lid on there so that it would stay warm. Beef, potatoes, and braised onions. And then I have for a side, a salad that I prepped with you guys when we went grocery shopping, we came back and prepped three of these salads. It has tomatoes, carrots, lettuce, cheese, and peas. I have some bottled dressing in the fridge. That's what's gonna be for dinner. And with all that leftover meat, because there's quite, that's a huge roast for just Josh and I. So we'll both have dinner. I'll make up two lunches and then the leftover beef and any leftover onions, I'll chop up. We'll use this broth to turn into stroganoff. You wanna see that this, what we did. So in here we have all of our living room furniture because we ripped up all the carpet. We prepped this room. It's echoey in here. Look how beautiful it is. It looks like a dance floor. That's what I've been doing all day. Josh has been doing little things around the house. Not little things, but he's been working around the house while I've been doing that. And so enough jibber jabber. It's time for us to eat dinner. Thanks for hanging out with us. I'll see you next time we're in the kitchen. Hey friends, welcome back. We just got finished doing a big breakfast freezer meal day and I had some extra onions here from that. So we're gonna go ahead and make the stroganoff with the leftover onions. So I caramelized them up quite a bit. You'll see that there might be a couple peppers in here because we were making breakfast burritos and you know, there might be like four or five peppers and I wasn't worried about that. I also added the extra onions from the roast that we didn't end up eating and I cooked those down quite a bit. I washed up our mushrooms, so we're gonna get these sliced up. I like to cut them pretty small because I don't really like to bite into a big mushroom. I love the flavor of mushrooms, but the texture is not my favorite. And then I did take the meat off the bone and any of the big fatty bits, I took those off so our meat is ready for our stroganoff. And I skimmed the fat off our broth and look how gelatinous this is. This is beautiful broth. Tons of flavor in here, we've got our broth from the meat, there's the red wine in there, and the stroganoff, and the Worcestershire sauce. So I turned my stove back on high, or medium high, so I'm gonna put these mushrooms in there as I get them sliced, so that they can start to cook. I'm gonna add a little extra butter, because we'll need that butter for our roux. I did wanna mention that it is only three o'clock right now, so it's not near dinner time, but we just finished up a big project in the kitchen, and I figured, we might as well get this done too while I'm in the kitchen because this can sit and wait for me. We won't cook the noodles until we're ready to eat dinner, but we'll at least have our sauce made. That's the part that takes a little bit of time. Hardly any effort though. The biggest effort here is just chopping these mushrooms because we have all the components already made. The broth, the meat, the onions were caramelized and those were kind of from, those were a bonus because those are from a different project earlier this morning. Josh and I have some more fun to be this evening, and so it's actually working out better that I'm able to get this done sooner because we'll be able to enjoy what we're doing this evening and then we can come home, I'll cook the noodles, and we'll have a delicious dinner. I'm gonna add just a little bit of garlic salt to help draw out the moisture of those mushrooms. So it's nice and brown. We're gonna add about a quarter cup of flour. Normally I would add some red wine right now, but I put so much red wine in that broth when we were cooking the roast that I don't think it's gonna need it. And I don't think it's gonna need any Worcestershire either because I put a lot of it when we were doing the roast. So we're just gonna cook this flour for about two minutes or so, kind of get that raw flour flavor out. This is gonna create a roux between the butter and the flour. And this beautifulness is going to thicken our sauce. We do need to add a little bit more garlic but I don't want to add any more garlic salt. So I have some of our home freeze dry garlic powder that I'm gonna go ahead and add to this right now. All right, let's add the broth. I'm gonna add just a little bit at a time so I can deglaze the bottom of this pan because there's a lot of bits stuck to the bottom of the pan. Oh, it smells incredible already. So rich and deep in flavor. I don't like to add the meat until the very end because I don't want the meat to completely fall apart. So that's why I'm gonna make the sauce first and then we'll add our meat. I do wanna add some black pepper to this. That's red pepper. I 
I guess I'm not adding any black pepper because that's all the black pepper I have in my house right now. So I guess I get to clean that up now. Unfortunately, this is pretty typical. I do break things pretty often. My husband is always surprised by my abilities to break things, but I wouldn't say that I'm graceful. I can get things done. And so it's just part of, it's just part of who I am. <laughs> and oh man, it's just, that was really all the pepper I have in my house. So unfortunately we're not going to be adding any black pepper to our stroganoff, which is sad because there's a few recipes that I think need a lot of pepper macaroni and cheese being one of them and stroganoff being the other one. So we're gonna mix one 16 ounce tub of sour cream in with our stroganoff. We're gonna add the beef. And as that warms up, it will start to shred a little bit more. But I didn't wanna add it in the beginning because I don't want it to be completely shredded. I like it to have a little bit of texture. What I'm gonna do is let this cool because it's not dinner time and we are gonna be heading out to go do something this evening and then coming back and eating dinner after. So I'm gonna let this cool on the stove. I'm gonna take it off the heat and then once it comes more down to room temperature, I'll throw it in the fridge until we're ready to eat and then I'll heat it up. I'll also cook up some homemade egg noodles. We made these egg noodles together and these are perfect with stroganoff. I'm also gonna put a dollop of sour cream on top and then I normally would top it with extra black pepper but you know what happened there. So thank you for hanging out with us. This was a fun, kind of like a comforting what we eat for dinner. I feel like every meal we made over this course of, it's been like a week and a half since we started this what's for dinner. I wanna say a huge thank you for spending time with me. If you enjoyed this, please give this a big thumbs up. If you know anyone else who might enjoy it, please consider sharing it. I can also put some videos right here that you can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friends.